Good day everyone, Kevin here. In this video, we'll be talking about the mode of group data. So actually, I already uploaded a video on this yesterday. Kaya lang, buti na lang, may nag-comment clarifying about the formula. And when I double-checked it, there is indeed a mistake. So thank you, thank you very much sa nag-comment. I appreciate the humble correction. So yeah, tingnan natin kung bakit nga ba medyo nakakalito ang formula ng mode of group data. So mode is the most frequently appearing value in the data set or yun yung value na pinakamarami sa data set. So kapag ka-ungroup data siya, we can easily observe kung ano yung mode. Kaya lang naka-frequency distribution table ang data natin. We cannot easily pinpoint what number is the mode of, of the data set. So ang gagawin natin is we are going to approximate the mode using this formula. Okay, so the mode of the group data is equal to the lower boundary of the modal class plus d sub 1 over d sub 1 plus d sub 2 multiplied to the class size. Okay, so um, yung mga d sub 1 and d sub 2 na to, they are differences. And when we say differences, subtraction ang involved dito. So yung video na in-upload ko previously is uh, baliktad yung d sub 1 and d sub 2. Okay, so ganito siya dapat. Okay, so let's have an example. Given the group data, calculate the mode of the mid-year tests scores of students in mathematics. So the first step is to add one column for the lower boundary. And what did I tell you about the lower boundary? Lower boundary is subtracting 0.50 from the lower limit of the class interval, okay? So yung lower limit natin dito sa class interval na to is 16. To get the lower boundary, we subtract 0.50 from 16. So doing that, we will be having an answer of 15.50. So lower boundary of this, of this class interval is 20.50 and so on. So we're going to complete this column. Okay, so bakit nga ba natin kinukuha yung lower boundary? So actually, itong lower boundary kasi, yung 20.50 na to, it can be rounded to the lower limit, which is 21. So tinatawag din tong true class boundary, and this is the lower limit of the true class boundary. Okay, so after completing that lower boundary column, we are going to identify the modal class. And if we are going back to the formula, the class with the highest frequency is the modal class. Alin ba dito yung class na my highest frequency? So we are going to look into the frequency column and tingnan natin yung value na pinakamalaki. And obviously, that is 14. So the modal class here is this one. So after identifying the modal class, i-identify na natin yung mga components ng formula. So sa formula, kailangan natin yung value nito. So ano bang lowest boundary ng modal class? So ito ang ating modal class. Yung lowest boundary is 25.50. And then we are going to identify the d sub 1. And d sub 1, guys, is the difference between the frequencies of the modal class and the next lower class. So ano ba yung frequency ng modal class? It is 14. Minus the frequency of the next lower class. Okay, so this is the modal class. And then we are going to subtract the frequency of the lower class just next to the modal class. So ito yung modal class. This is the lower class just preceding the modal class. So ito yung frequency. So this will be D1. So that is 14 minus 7. And D1 now is equal to 7. D sub 2, on the other hand, is the difference between the frequencies of the modal class and the next upper class. So balik sa table, frequency of the modal class and the next upper class. So ito yung modal class, the next upper class is itong 31 to 35. So that is 14 minus 8. 14 minus 8 is 6. Okay? 
And then yung mga kailangan pa sa formula is yung class size. And class size can be obtained simply by counting. So class size, yan yung kung gaano kalaki or kalawak yung ating class interval. So pili ka lang ng isang class interval. Actually, paparehas din lang naman yung class size ng mga yan. And then we're going to count from the lower limit to the upper limit. So let's say this one. It's like this, okay? So, yung class interval niya, this is how we obtain it. So, 16, 16 is the lower limit, right? 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Okay, so from 16 to 20, yung class size natin is 5. So, ganun ang pagkuha ng class size. Sometimes, pinagpapalit ng iba yung D sub 1 and D sub 2 kasi there are times na yung given na FDT is naka-arrange in descending or decreasing order. Kung mapapansin nyo yung sinold natin kanina, yung mga class intervals are naka-arrange from lowest to highest. So, naka-arrange siya in increasing or ascending order. Kung ito kasi ang isasold natin, di ba ito yung modal class, yung magiging D sub 1 natin is ito. Okay, bakit? If we're going back to the formula, D1 is the difference between the frequencies of the modal class and the next lower class. Ito ang modal class. Ang lower class just next to the modal class is 21 to 25. So sometimes napagpapalit talaga nila yung D sub 1 and D sub 2. So please don't be confused. Basta yung D sub 1, iyan yung um, difference ng frequency ng modal class and the next class. Lower class, lower class, the mas maliit, lower class, okay? So lower class, 21 to 25 is lower than 26 to 30, okay? Tingnan mo dito, 21 to 25 is lower than 26 to 30. We're talking about the values here. Dito hindi natin tinutukoy kung ano yung nasa taas or nasa baba, kundi tinitingnan natin yung values sa ating class intervals, okay? Alin ba dyan yung mas mataas, alin yung mas mababa? Okay, so now we're ready to substitute. So, sa substitute natin yung mga components ng ating formula. So, LBMO here is 25.50 plus D sub 1 is 7. D sub 1 is 7 as well. Plus, yung D sub 2 natin dito is 6 multiplied to the class size, which is, kabibilang lang natin kanina, that is 5. Okay? So, ito, pwede ko na siyang idiretso sa calculator. Pero sabi ko nga, kung may doubt ka sa calculator mo, you can do it step by step. So, pwede mong isolve muna yung nasa loob nito. And then after that, you're going to multiply it to 5 and then you add it to 25.50. Pero sa akin, mas madali yung idiretso ka na lang lahat sa calculator. And so, yung sagot doon is 28.19. Okay, so the mode of that group data is 28.19. There you have it, guys. That's how we solve for the mode of group data. So first, you add an additional column for the LBMO. Next, we're going to identify the modal class. And then after identifying the modal class, I-compute natin yung D sub 1 and D sub 2. So please take note of the difference of the two. And then, we're going to substitute. And then after that, we're going to identify the other needed components for the formula, then substitute, and then input na lang sa calculator. So hindi siya mahirap, maproseso lang siya, and please don't get confused kina D sub 1 and D sub 2. So I hope I helped you in this video. Thank you guys for watching. See you in the next video.